Hello and welcome. As always, this is Alistair Christie bringing you another training movie. This is going to be our second part in a series on SQL, and we're going to take a look at some functions. In this guide, we'll have a look at some numeric functions, specifically count, min, max, average, and sum. The other kinds of functions operate on strings, but we'll be looking at those in the later movie. If you haven't seen part one yet, I suggest you watch this first, as we will be building on what we've already learnt. And as before, this is going to be teaching by example, so we will not be covering every facet and feature, but I'll be giving you enough information to get started. And with that, let's get stuck in. The first function we're going to look at is count. Count simply tells you how many records there are. Like all the standard aggregate functions, count takes a single parameter, a field name. For count, however, it does not matter what field you specify, and often star is used. At this point, I'm also going to show you the group by keywords. Here we have split up the count so that it is grouped by country. In our customer table, what is the number of records for each country? And in this instance, we have four customers in the Bahamas. Lucky them. We can further extend this to include state. And now we see that we have six customers in California and five in Florida and so on. And we can also add a WHERE clause. So that we're only interested in the United States and Canada. So what have we got so far? We've got, uh, we're selecting from our customer table uh, two fields, country and state, and uh, using this count function to give us a number of records. But we're grouping them by country and state. Um, however, we're only interested in the, the, where the country is the US and the country is Canada. I can actually um, leave off state here, um, but it reduces its usefulness um, because we can't tell which state um, corresponds. However, I can't take off the state in the group by because every field that we select must be in the group by, um, not including functions. Another couple of common functions are max and min. These just return the largest and smallest values for a given column. and also min. So we've got the uh, so oldest and newest invoices. And you can also use group by on that as well. Uh, except it'd be nice to include country. In fact, we'll put it at the beginning. There are two other functions that just about every SQL server will implement, and they are average and sum. To have a look at these, we will swap to the orders table. And in fact, we are going to be interested in the items total field. So we're going to calculate the average of this field with the AVG function. We can combine this with other functions that we know. And add our group by clause. Mm 
Okay, there we go. And finally, let's add some. Which is just the summation of the field. And we're just going to give these um, some slightly more meaningful field names. Tools. and and there we go. Moving on, let's um, go back to the average function. Now, the average is just the um, sum divided by the count. And we see that it pretty much gives us the same, same value. In fact, we can also go and this gives us something very much approximating zero. We could try and do something almost useful. Um, select the custom number and the max of items total minus the minimum of get the items total spread. Okay, and that gives us the spread is actually not very useful, but um, it's an illustration of using some uh, arithmetic operators and functions. So there it is. And as we've run out of time, um, this will be my last example. Until next time. So as a very quick summary, we've looked at five functions: count, min, max, average, and sum, all of which are fairly self-explanatory. We've also looked at the group by clause, which enables you to perform these functions on groups of records based on the distinct values of a field. You may remember the distinct keyword from the last movie. Group by and distinct have some similarities. We're still only scratching the surface. There's still plenty to cover with regards to select, and we haven't even mentioned updating and deleting information in tables, or even how to create and modify the structure of tables. We've come to the end of SQL part 2, and I hope to have part 3 available soon, just as soon as I decide what to cover. Until then, goodbye and thanks for watching.